To start the upgrade, run the installer script. And after the menu loads, notice that the option to upgrade is G, not U as you might expect. U is actually for uninstalling the product, which is probably the opposite of what you want to do here. The menu gives you two choices for upgrading, a full upgrade and a rolling upgrade. The difference between a full upgrade and a rolling upgrade is that a full upgrade will upgrade all of the cluster nodes at the same time, while a rolling upgrade will upgrade the cluster nodes one at a time in a rolling fashion. The advantage of a full upgrade is that the process is much simpler, and it's faster because the upgrade is done all at once. The advantage of a rolling upgrade is that because it only upgrades one node at a time, it will actually switch your cluster service groups to, say, node B while node A is being upgraded. So a rolling upgrade takes longer, and it adds some complexity, but it also minimizes the impact to production because the cluster groups are still running on another node while the current node is being updated. So if you've got a maintenance window where you can actually take a sustained outage for a little while, a full upgrade is usually easiest. If you don't have the luxury of a maintenance window, a rolling upgrade will at least allow you to minimize the impact to production, but you'll still have outages while the cluster groups are being switched between cluster nodes during the rolling upgrade process. In this video, we'll do a full upgrade. There's actually another video where we do a rolling upgrade. At this prompt, we would usually enter the host names of the nodes that we're going to upgrade, but it looks like the script has already figured them out, so we'll just hit enter. At this point, it's going to do an initial check to make sure that an upgrade is possible. So at the next screen, it's letting us know that the version of Storage Foundation that we are upgrading to only supports Veritas File System version 7. So if you're running a file system version that is earlier than version 7, you'll want to use the vxfs convert command in order to upgrade it before you actually perform the upgrade. And it also gives us the command to check the current file system version, and that command is fstyp-v, or fstype-v. So let's go ahead and accept the license agreement. Here's a list of modules that will be affected during the upgrade. During the upgrade process, the installer script is going to uninstall and reinstall various modules. So the first list shows the modules that will be uninstalled, and the second list shows the modules being installed and upgraded. And we can just hit enter a few times to get past this. In order to run the installation, it needs to stop the Storage Foundation HA processes, so we'll go ahead and say yes, and then wait for things to shut down. And this can take a few minutes, so let's go ahead and fast forward here. And after the processes are shut down, it'll start the upgrade process. And let's let it update the licenses. At this point, the upgrade process is basically completed, so it's going to start everything back up. At this point, the installation script is complete, and Storage Foundation is now updated. One other thing that I should point out is that when you upgrade Storage Foundation, it doesn't actually make any changes to the disk groups themselves. That's actually another step that you perform after the upgrade. The reason for this is that once you've upgraded the disk group version, it actually becomes unreadable to older versions of Storage Foundation. So before doing the disk group upgrade, make sure that you're happy with the upgraded version because the disk group upgrade is kind of a one-way street. And it's actually a very quick and simple process, and since this is just a lab, let's go ahead and run it just to show you how it works. To see the current disk group version, you can run vxdg list followed by the name of the disk group. In this case, the disk group version is 160. To upgrade it, just type vxdg upgrade and then the name of the disk group again. And as you can see, it doesn't take long to do the upgrade. 
So if we, if we run VXDG list again, we can see that the disk group version is now at 180. Before it was at 160, so the disk group upgrade is done. So at this point, you can rerun the installer script and select the post install check to make sure that everything is working okay. There's actually another video on that, so I'm not going to redo it here. So, thanks for watching, and that's it.